The hydration of alkynes parallels the hydration of alkenes in that there are ways to achieve both Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov regioselectivity. Internal alkynes provide no basis for selectivity because both alkyne carbons have the exact same level of substitution. Therefore, symmetrical internal alkynes will yield a single product of hydration, whereas unsymmetrical internal alkynes will yield two regioisomeric hydration products. On the other hand, terminal alkynes do provide a basis for selectivity because the alkyne carbons do have a difference in the level of substitution. If a terminal alkyne is treated with mercuric sulfate in the presence of water and sulfuric acid, Markovnikov hydration occurs. This yields an enol in which the alkyne carbon that possessed more hydrogens to begin with, acquires the new hydrogen during the course of the hydration. This enol then rapidly undergoes a process known as tautomerization to afford a methyl ketone as the final reaction product. However, when a terminal alkyne is subjected to hydroboration oxidation, Anti-Markovnikov hydration occurs, and this affords the regioisomeric enol. This enol will also rapidly undergo tautomerization, but in this case, that results in an aldehyde product. Let's consider mechanisms for both of these processes, beginning with the Markovnikov hydration of a terminal alkyne which employs mercuric sulfate as a source of the mercuric ion. The mercuric ion draws the weakly nucleophilic terminal alkyne into reaction. An alkyne pi bond attacks the mercuric ion and the mercury reciprocates by attacking the carbon of the alkyne that would otherwise have lost a bond. This forms a mercurinium ion, which is reminiscent of the intermediate seen in the oxymercuration demercuration of alkenes. In a fashion analogous to what we saw in that reaction, water attacks the carbon of the mercurinium ion that bears the greater partial positive charge, and that is the more highly substituted secondary carbon. This opens the mercurinium ion and an oxonium ion results. This oxonium ion loses a proton and finally the mercury is exchanged for a proton to afford the Markovnikov enol. Tautomerization of the Markovnikov enol then occurs rapidly in this aqueous acid medium. The remaining pi bond is protonated so as to form the only carbocation that can be resonance stabilized. The more stable resonance form of this carbocation contains an oxonium ion and the loss of a proton from that oxonium ion generates the methyl ketone reaction product. Let's now turn our attention to a mechanism for the alternative hydration method to yield the anti-Markovnikov regioisomer. And this method is hydroboration oxidation. It very closely mimics the hydroboration oxidation of alkenes. In the first step of the reaction, a borane is added across an alkyne pi bond, and this occurs with anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry. The alkyne pi bond attacks the electrophilic boron so as to place the developing partial positive charge on the carbon that can bear that more stably, and that is the more highly substituted secondary carbon.
This developing partial positive charge then draws in electrons from the boron-hydrogen bond. And the result is the net addition of both hydrogen and boron across the alkyne pi bond. In step two of the reaction, boron is replaced where it stands by a hydroxyl group to afford the anti-Marconikoff enol. The mechanism for this second step of the reaction can be found in the video on the hydroboration oxidation of alkenes. This anti-Marconikoff enol will now also rapidly tautomerize. But this time, the medium is aqueous base, and so the mechanism for tautomerization must be a bit different than it was in aqueous acid. The tautomerization begins with the deprotonation of the hydroxyl group, and this affords an anion that is resonance stabilized. The electrons can be pushed onto the secondary carbon. And it is this carbon which bears carbanion character that is protonated in the second step of the mechanism to yield the aldehyde product of the anti-Marconikoff hydration of an alkyne. If you have been comparing the anti-Marconikoff hydration of an alkyne to the anti-Marconikoff hydration of an alkene, you'll notice a subtle difference in that the reaction with alkynes uses an organoborane. And this is in contrast to the hydration of alkenes, which uses borane or a similar species. This is because of the presence of multiple pi bonds in alkynes. And there's a concern about having multiple additions of hydrogen and boron across those multiple pi bonds. So to discourage that, reagents are used that possess only a single boron-hydrogen bond. Furthermore, these reagents contain bulky alkyl groups, and those bulky alkyl groups also further discourage multiple addition. Two commonly used reagents are 9-BBN and disamyl borane. However, there are other reagents that may also be used in this capacity. Let's consider a specific example of the Marconikoff hydration of a terminal alkyne. Mercuric sulfate is a source of the mercuric ion which engages the weakly nucleophilic terminal alkyne in reaction. It draws in an alkyne pi bond, and the mercury attacks the interior carbon of the alkyne, which would otherwise have lost a bond. This results in a mercurinium ion, and the mercurinium ion is attacked by water at the more electrophilic carbon that is the carbon which is more highly substituted and can therefore bear a greater partial positive charge. As a result of this attack, the mercurinium ion is opened, forming an oxonium ion. The oxonium ion sheds a proton to the medium. And finally, the mercury is exchanged for a proton to afford the Marconikoff enol. The Marconikoff enol tautomerizes in the presence of the acid used for this reaction. The remaining pi bond is protonated, and in the process we form the only possible resonance-stabilized carbocation. As that carbocation is resonance-stabilized, we see a resonance structure in which all atoms bear a complete octet and this is therefore the major resonance contributor to the hybrid. Loss of a proton from this major resonance contributor yields the methyl ketone product. The same terminal alkyne 
can be subjected to hydroboration oxidation to afford a different product. The reaction begins with the attack of the alkyne pi bond on the electrophilic boron. This places developing partial positive character on the carbon that is more highly substituted, and that is the interior alkyne carbon. This partial positive character draws in the electrons from a boron-hydrogen bond, and the net result is the addition of both hydrogen and boron across a pi bond. In the second step of the reaction, the boron is replaced where it stands by a hydroxyl group, yielding an anti marconikoff enol. In the presence of the aqueous base used for this reaction, the enol can also tautomerize. But it tautomerizes through a deprotonation, which yields an anion that is resonance stabilized, and that anion is then protonated at the electron-rich carbon to afford an aldehyde as the final reaction product. It's worth comparing this to the methyl ketone that was formed from the Markovnikov hydration of the same alkyne reactant. In summary, alkynes may be hydrated in multiple ways. Internal alkynes provide no basis for selectivity because both of the alkyne carbons have the same level of substitution. Therefore, symmetrical internal alkynes will yield a single ketone regardless of the method used. On the other hand, unsymmetrical internal alkynes will unavoidably yield regioisomeric ketone products, again, regardless of the method used. On the other hand, terminal alkynes do provide a basis for selectivity because the alkyne carbons have differing levels of substitution. Therefore, treatment with mercuric sulfate and sulfuric acid in water accomplishes Markovnikov hydration, yielding an ephemeral Markovnikov enol that rapidly tautomerizes to a methyl ketone product. Alternatively, hydroboration oxidation affords an anti-Markovnikov enol. And again, tautomerization is immediate, and the final product is an aldehyde. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.